Okay, so what if you could build a whole dungeon with loot, with monsters, with NPCs, with a simple few clicks and show it to your players in 3D? NeverEnding Dungeon is a piece of software that is currently being made by Spell Arena, a company creating maps, uh, adventures, um, modules for roughly uh, three years. Now, they just launched a Kickstarter with their new product, NeverEnding Dungeon, or NED for short, and you can see it just, uh, just behind me. Um, they created several thousand maps for the VTT, so that's a pretty decent indication that they do know what they are doing. Currently, they have 500 patrons on their Patreon, and uh, they use a unique visual style. But to be fair, uh, there's a relative stretch between building VTT maps and adventures and modules and such, and building this, what you can see behind me. Uh, this is why they teamed up teamed up with uh, Bearded Brothers .game, uh, games, and they uh, use one of the engines that Bearded Brothers use for their currently developed game. Uh, so combining the Spell Arena know-how and the Bearded Brothers um, know-how on the dev market, um, they are developing exactly this. <clears throat> now, to uh, when you look at this, you probably see a mapping tool, something that is built for uh, that is constructed for building maps. Uh, according to Artur Kurasiński, who is the founder of Spell Arena, uh, this is not exactly true. Um, I reached out to him and this is what he said. It is designed for game masters to create campaigns. Now, there might be a slight uh, misunderstanding from the, for the word campaign, what we understand in, in campaign over here. For me, a campaign is something right, like uh, Storm King's Wonder, so a book that is 250 pages long. Um, but for Arthur, this might be, might be slightly, slightly different because, and I am going to quote him again, I've been playing TTRPGs for 30 years and I mainly play AD&D 2nd Edition. I had approaches to other systems like D20, Cthulhu, Warhammer, but I wasn't able to get used to them. It's just probably about the team that you play with. We are dinosaurs and we have our own habits. We have been playing mainly sessions based on our own rules and we try to minimize the rules for fun and storytelling. And so if you know something about AD&D uh, and their modules and their settings, uh, those were usually small booklets, 30 pages long, 50 pages, 70 pages long, but they never reached 250 pages like, uh, like contemporary models. So if you are on that uh, boat, when that approach, that a uh, campaign can be uh, roughly just the skeleton, uh, a sandbox for you, uh, then yes, this will be, uh, this looks like uh, this will be a campaign generator with uh, maps, with uh, objects, with monsters, with tools, and other things that can be very, very useful. So um, it all depends on you. Uh, this is uh, clearly a visualization, so it's not what we will get. This is not exactly the product that we will get, although this is how the developers envision it. So I would say that that is pretty, pretty decent. And also on the video right now, before a second, you could see something interesting, um, meaning uh, printouts for uh, for from your maps so you can not only use it as a virtual tool you can also a digital tool you can also use it as something to uh, export and um, and print out your uh, maps right now there's a myriad of options uh, that you can use to build uh, to um, obtain never-ending dungeon they are still under Kickstarter they have nine days to go uh, the product is, has long been founded in seven hours. They have right now 156,000 euros, uh, so much, much more than they uh, than they initially uh, thought they will um, they will gather. And as you can see over here, there's a myriad of options for pledges and so on. I'm not going to go one by one over here because that doesn't make exactly sense. What is important for me is that there is a digital pledge uh, that is my pledge and in digital pledge you get all the things that uh, you need for your digital games including what is impor important for me um, an early access to the beta program so we will get back to the rendering dungeons in spring next year hopefully but um, we will see how the development process goes so let's answer a few uh, questions we know that uh, that developers are human although playing for years in AD&D and too, whew, that's hard. Uh, but we know they're human, we know what NET is, uh, so um, how to use it? So 
right now we don't know much uh, on the topic of mm, direct usage of the tool but we know what we saw from uh, from the video and from what i talked with arthur uh, it seems that we will be inputting some um some info towards uh, towards the software we will be telling the software software what levels our players are um what we want to achieve how big the dungeon might be um and what style the dungeon should be and so on and so on and the software will generate a, a whole dungeon or something else because i'm speaking dungeons but i don't mean necessarily only dungeons um so the software will develop uh, the rest for us and we will be able to tweak it um and this brings me to another topic meaning how flexible it is well we are going to get some options for importing tweaking and so on but when it comes to the visual aspect this is a little bit more complicated i for example prefer some specific style in mapping my favorite map maker is mike schley and i like his style which is somewhat cartoonish or well it is unique if you know who i'm talking about uh, then um then you know mike schley is very very unique could i use my own assets that i have to produce something in uh, ned not exactly uh, and i'm again going to quote from uh, my little chat with arthur we have to impose the style because everything that you can see will be generated from previously prepared pieces unfortunately if you want to run a session using more cartoon pages uh, cartoon maps this will be not an option um, our maps can be described as super realistic and that's the style that we apply you will be able to upload your tokens and graphics but the map style cannot be modified as for the view because there are 3d maps we are freely uh, we can freely change the view from the first person view through the top view to the isometric view so uh, one more important thing over here imagine that not only we will be able to uh, build a 3d map that um, that looks uh, from different angles uh, interesting but we will be able to show our players how the map looks from the first person perspective that's something very very new on the DT, uh, vtt um, or ttrpg um, uh, environment at least that's not something that I know about. Uh, it's a very interesting blend of uh, classic mapping and something very, very new, a new approach to how to show players the visuals. Um, that's something I think worth taking into account. So we won't get specific map styles uh, that we would wish, um, although uh, the developers also say that they will develop further styles. Um, on the other hand, there's going to be a lot of importing available, a lot of tweaking, uh, a lot of stuff that we will be able to homebrew. So to make sure that they don't break any licenses and intellectual property, the monsters, for example, that we are going to get will be neutral and we will be able to um, apply some stats and lore and so on to the monsters themselves. Uh, so that we have the monsters that we want the initial uh, pool will be towards uh, D, D 5e although from what i under also understand and from what you can read in the kickstarter page uh, there are uh, there's a will and there's uh, there's there's an option to make the system more um ready for other uh, make the software more ready for other systems like pathfinder or starfinder or so on uh, they are very very open also to uh, science fiction maps and so on it all depends on the funds that they will gather this is why they also will start working on the on the software itself when they finish the kickstarter uh, it's a courageous approach i'm not sure if i uh, if that's the most safe approach for uh, us uh, backers but still as a friend of mine said i've uh, i've paid more for less so uh Will it integrate with other pieces of software? Uh, it has to. Uh, Ned is not a VTT and will not be a VTT. It will not go online in any way, uh, at least not for the initial start. But uh, you will be able to export both animated and um, and uh, static maps to other uh, VTTs like Foundry, like Roll20, like Astral or Fancy Grounds or other uh, pieces of software that you have. You will just export a map and for the Roll20 and Foundry, I know that there will be a uh, dynamic light system. I imagine that that also means that there will be a barrier system, so walls will be also automatically generated, which saves a lot of time. If you use one of those two tools, you know what I'm talking about. Is it trustworthy? Well, I mean, it's a Kickstarter. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you're going to do what you should do with your money but it's a kickstarter the final product might vary from what we initially thought it will be it might be later it might be earlier um there's always some risk 
uh, involved. But as mentioned, uh, I've paid more for less, so uh, why not? The minimal pledge is $30 and you get the software for 30 bucks. Uh, the maximum pledge is $1,000. Uh, well, that's a lot, but uh, I know. Uh, perspectives, uh, as uh, as mentioned a little bit earlier, they do plan to develop NED uh, further. And again, a small quote, we plan to develop NED with new functions. For example, we can help create entire cities with detail at the level of single person NPC or items. Imagine that, building a whole city for your players in which you can zoom in and zoom out uh, to a singular NPC or item and explore a whole uh, a whole town or city uh, generated like that from scratch from just a few uh, inputs that you initially gave to the software. I back the software because I believe it's something worth uh, having in my digital repertoire. If you also find that it's the case, you still have eight or seven days uh, for backing the project, um, at least at the moment when I'm recording this video. Later, the product will be available on Steam for 40 bucks, the base product, although you won't get the additional things that you get when you are a Kickstarter backer. Um, this is it for the first episode of this digital tool set uh, series. Uh, I hope you like it. If so, you can leave me a comment, thumbs up and stuff like that. Uh, and I hope to see you around for the next episode, which will be soon-ish. Uh, and I'll see you around. Bye.